Welcome everyone to our 60-minute vinyasa in Harvard Gulch Park. It's a completely cloudless sky, isn't it? Just beautiful. Hmm. And why don't we, uh, as we ordinarily do at the beginning of class, just take a few moments to become present, to settle in. Settle into your surroundings. Let your body settle in first. And just notice how it's relaxing into the mat and into the earth and into this place. And once you feel that sensation of the body settling in, then notice that your mind is following. If it helps, follow the breath flowing in and flowing out. Now begin consciously breathing, noticing the breath, breathing in, feeling the spine lengthen. Keep that length and beautiful posture as you exhale. And then inhale again, feeling the length as you inhale. And just follow that process. Letting the breath help you to lengthen the spine Find a couple more breaths. And one more. Bring the arms out to a T, and then on an inhale, lift the arms high. Bring the palms together. Keep the arms straight as you exhale, and bring the hands down, touching the earth with the fingertips. On an inhale, reach back up. Big, deep breath in. Exhale and down. And inhale and up. And exhale and down. Twice more. Inhale up. Exhale down. And inhale and up. Now bring the palms together and exhale the hands to heart center. Inhale, reach back up. Bring the hands behind you, interlace the fingers, and straighten the elbows. Press the skin of the palms together. Draw the shoulder blades together. Take a deep breath. As you exhale, slowly hinge at the hips, keeping the spine long. Reach the knuckles up and overhead. And then inhale. The core engages now as you rise up. Keep the spine long as you come up. Once you're all the way up, take a deep breath in. And on the exhale, draw the shoulder blades even a little closer together on the back and then release the hands. Reach them high again, palms together, and to heart center. Inhale, reach the arms back up. Exhale to a T. Take a twist to the right. Bring the left hand to the right knee. The right hand comes down behind. Breathe in deeply. Draw the navel in, and exhale and twist to the right. Do that again, a, beat, a big deep breath in. Exhale and find the twist. And one more time, big deep breath. And exhale, let it go. Bring it all back to center. Reach the arms high and to heart center. Now bring the hands down to the mat. Press the palms into the mat. Elbows straight. Hmm. Lift the chin just a little bit. Now on the exhale, bring your chin to your chest. Draw your navel in. Bend the elbows and let your forehead come down towards the mat. Most of us are going to feel a stretch in the low back. Now press into the palms, keep the chin on the chest, keep drawing the navel in as you rise. Then once you're all the way up, release the hands, reach them high, and then to heart center. Bring the arms out to a T. Let's take a twist to the left this time. Right hand to left knee, the left hand comes down behind you. Take a deep breath, and let the breath go. Do that twice more. Big deep breath in, drawing the navel in on the inhale. And exhale, pull the navel back and to the left. Let's do that one more time. Big deep breath. And let it go. Come back to center, reach the arms high. 
Exhale the hands down. Second time here, press the palms into the mat. Lift the chin just a little bit. As you exhale, bend the elbows, bring the chin to the chest, bring the forehead down towards the mat. On the inhale, come back up. And let the arms float high. Now take a hold of the left wrist with the right hand and then pull that right hand or the left hand over to the right, stretching the side body. On an inhale, come back up and press through the left palm. Lift your gaze up, looking towards the cloudless sky. And then level the chin and switch your grip. So now left hand grasps right wrist and pull over to the left. Really stretch it out. Stay grounded in the right sitting bone. On an inhale, rise back up, engaging the core. Press through the right palm. Lift your gaze up. Press the palm up towards the sky and then level the chin. You can bring the hands down in front now. Let's come to table pose. And once you're in table pose, make sure that the knees are below the hips and the hands more or less below the shoulders. A little difficult here because we're on kind of uneven terrain a little. Now inhale to cow pose, lifting your chin. Reach the tailbone away from the knees and then exhale to cat pose, bringing your chin to your chest. Draw your navel up towards the cloudless sky as you let your forehead come closer to the knees. Do that again. Inhale to cow pose. And exhale to cat. And just continue flowing. Five more times. We're going to do a total of seven times through. Remember to feel free to let your eyes close down. flowing through cow and cat. About three more times. And twice more. And one more time through. And then come back to center, back to table pose. Walk your hands forward now, about six inches or so. And now draw the navel up towards the sky and then glide your hips forward. Keep the elbows straight as you press the hands into the mat. Now press your navel forward, press your pubic bone down, and then draw the shoulder blades together. Keep your gaze straight forward, so try not to look down or up too much. Now draw the navel up to come out of the pose press your hands into the mat and think about stretching your tailbone towards your heels as you press back towards a version of child's pose feel the stretch in the shoulders on an inhale rise back up gliding the hips forward and down lift your chin a little this time and then come out by drawing the navel up again towards the sky and then think about pressing your tailbone towards your heels, lengthening the whole upper body. Feel that stretch in the shoulders and the armpits. And let's go through that one more time, gliding the hips forward and down. And then pressing back, reaching the tailbone towards the heels. And then come back to center and press your hips to the right and then forward and then to the left. And we're going to make circles that are about 18 inches or two feet in diameter. Make those circles with the hips. Just letting the hips move from side to side or actually around the big circle. And after a few times, just pause and then go back the other way. And then back to center. So we're back to table pose. From here, step your right foot forward so the right foot comes between the hands. Maybe heel toe the right foot over to the right a little bit so you have a little bit wider and more stable platform. Then press into the right foot and reach up into a low crescent lunge. Here you can bring the palms together. You can interlace the fingers if you like and look up towards the index fingers, stretching the index fingers up towards the cloudless sky. 
press that right foot forward, or the right knee rather, forward a little bit more, and maybe pull the hands back, deepening the back bend. Come out by reaching the index finger straight up, and then release the hands and bring them down on either side of the right foot. Tuck the toes and bring the left knee off the mat, straightening the left leg. Press back on the left heel until you feel a stretch in the calf on the left side and then straighten the right leg and pull the right hip back, pull the left hip forward, keep the spine long. So for many of us this will create a stretch in the back of the right leg. Now bend the right knee and bring the left knee to the mat. Reach the arms up and overhead, stretch up high, and then exhale the hands down. Step that right knee back, and step the left foot forward so the left foot now ends up between the hands. We're going to do the same thing more or less on the other side. Press in the left foot and rise. Come all the way up. Now you can interlace the fingers, point the index fingers, maybe lift your gaze up so you're looking again towards the index fingers and stretch up as you press that left knee forward and then maybe press in the left foot and reach the index fingers up and back. Come out by reaching the index fingers high, level your gaze, and bring the hands down on either side of the left foot. Now tuck the toes and bring the right knee off the mat and press back on the right heel. Anybody feeling a stretch in the calf on that right side? Yeah, so the more you press back on that right heel, the deeper that stretch becomes. And now straighten the left leg and pull the left hip back a little bit, pull the right hip forward, and see if you can start to feel a nice stretch in the back of the right leg. Now from here, bend the left knee. We're gonna do something different to come out of this. Bend the left knee, keep the weight in the left foot, and step the right foot forward into a standing forward fold, and let your head drop down. You can take opposite elbows if you like, and shake it out a little bit. Let the head move side to side and forward and back, so nod. Let those neck muscles start to release really nicely. Now keep your chin on your chest and we're going to round the spine to come up. You can drag your hands along the front of the legs as you rise if you like. And then once you're all the way up, let your arms float high and exhale the hands, bringing them back to heart center. Inhale and up. Exhale the arms to a T. Now a swan dive to a forward fold and then to a half lift. Here, pause, lengthen the spine. Reach your head forward, press your tailbone back. Bring the weight into the front of the feet a little bit more so that you feel like you might tip forward so you're a little bit unsteady in the pose. Now a slight bend in the knees. Fold forward, let your upper body come all the way down, head reaching towards the mat. Now bring the hands to the mat and step the right foot back. And then the left foot's going to follow it into plank pose. Take a breath in plank. And on the exhale, knees come to the mat. Untuck the toes so your top of your feet are off the mat. Now bring your chin and your chest down to the mat, inchworming your way into a cobra pose. Elbows stay tucked in close to the body. So try not to flare the elbows out. Have them tucked in instead. Take a breath and then release. Tuck your toes stiff in your body as you push to plank, and then let your hips rise into downward facing dog. Now press down on the heels. For me, that creates a lot of stretch in the back of the legs, and the calves in particular. Let your heart melt down towards the mat. On an inhale, reach your left leg up, press the right heel down, and then step the left foot forward bringing it between the hands, second or third effort if you need to. Now bring the weight in the left foot and step the right foot forward into a standing forward fold. The head drops down. So let your forehead come a little closer to the shins if you can. Now chin on chest, round the spine and rise. And let your arms reach up and overhead and exhale to heart center. Whew, take a breath. Should we do that again? Let's do that again. Inhale up, swan dive, forward fold into a half lift. Spine lengthens in the half lift. 
Little bend in the knees, bring the hands down to the mat. This time keep the uh, left foot forward, step the right foot back. I think we actually did that last time, we'll do that again. And left foot steps back to meet it into plank pose. Take a breath. On the exhale, knees to the mat, untuck the toes, feet are off the mat, chin and chest come down, let them touch the mat. And then cobra pose, maybe a little higher this time if you like, deepening that back bend, pressing the chest forward, drawing the shoulder blades together on the back. So try not to scrunch your shoulders up towards your ears. Relax the shoulders back and down. One more breath. And down. Tuck your toes, push to plank. And lift the hips, downward facing dog. Press the heels down towards the mat. Now on an inhale, reach the right leg up. Press the left heel down. And then step your right foot forward so it comes between the hands. And the left foot's going to follow standing forward fold. This time arms come out to a T. Bring the weight into the front of the feet as you reverse swan dive. Rising up nice and slow. Maybe feeling that in the hamstrings and gluteal muscles. Arms reach high. Look up and exhale the hands to heart center. Inhale up. This time bring the hands behind you, interlace the fingers behind the back, press the knuckles towards the heels, draw the shoulder blades together. Big deep breath in. As you exhale, hinge at the hips, nice and sl slow coming down. Now let your head drop down, reach your knuckles up to the sky, let your forehead come closer to the uh, shins. Now release the hands, bring them all the way down. And this time, leave your right foot forward, step your left foot back into runner's lunge. Bring the left knee to the mat, untuck the toes, and reach the arms up and overhead. Low crescent lunge, second time here. Press the right knee forward now. Untuck the toes on that right foot. Press the top of the right foot, or sorry, left foot. Press the top of the left foot into the mat. Reach up even higher. You can lift your gaze up so you can look towards the sky. Now level the chin, bring the arms out to a T, hands reach apart from one another, take a deep breath, and exhale and take your twist to the right, prayer twist, left elbow to right knee, palms joined together, right elbow reaches high. Keep pressing that right knee forward a little bit, so keep a little pressure on that right knee. Now keep the palms together, press into the right foot, and come back up, then reach the arms high, and bring them down on either side of the right foot. Toes tucked now as the left knee comes off the mat, the left leg just straightened. Step the right foot back into plank pose. Let's find three breaths now. Check in with your alignment, making sure the hips are aligned with the shoulders and heels. That is, nice straight line there. One more deep breath. On the exhale, flow through a vinyasa. Either knees, chest, chin, or upward facing dog. Sorry, either knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga into upward facing dog. Pause for a moment and just breathe. Now on the exhale, tuck the toes and let the hips rise, coming to downward facing dog. Stretch it out now, pressing the tailbone up and back, pressing the hands into the mat. And on an inhale, reach the left leg up. Maybe even a little higher, pointing the toes. And then step that left foot forward bringing it between the hands. Let your right knee come to the mat, untuck the toes, and press the right foot into the mat. Now rise, low crescent lunge, second time on this side. Arms out to a T, take a deep breath. Exhale, take your twist. Bring the palms together, right elbow comes to the left knee, left elbow reaches high. Just breathe. Now keep the palms together and back to center. Reach the arms up and then exhale the hands down either side of the left foot. Tuck the toes now and straighten the right leg so the right knee comes off the mat. Left foot steps back into plank pose. Take a breath and then flow through a vinyasa. Knees, chest, chin or chaturanga. Upward facing dog. And when you're ready, let's find downward facing dog. Now, three breaths and downward facing dog. 
Keep pressing your hands into the mat. Keep reaching your tailbone up and back so you find lots and lots of length in the spine. See if you can find just a little bit more length in the spine. Stretch it out just a little bit more. Beautiful. Now bend your knees more than that and then take a hop. Eventually the feet end up between the hands even if that means you walk a bit. Let your head drop down. Three breaths now. You can take opposite elbows if you want. Think about reaching the elbows down towards the big toes, helping to lengthen the spine. Now keep opposite elbows and keep the biceps on either side of the ears. Bring the weight into the front of the feet a little bit more and now rise. Spine stays long as you're coming up. Eventually the elbows are going to reach straight up towards the cloudless sky. Stretch it out and lift your gaze up. Now pull the elbows back, lift your gaze a little higher, bring the weight into the front of the feet. Find a little back bend. Good job. Now release opposite elbows. Let the hands come all the way down so the palms face forward, thumbs point out. Take a deep breath. And two more. Big deep breath. And one more. How's everybody doing this morning? Isn't it a beautiful morning? Such a great morning to be alive and out doing yoga in the park. Can't think of anything I'd rather be doing than this. One more breath. Mm. Let your arms float up and then to heart center. Leave the right foot forward, step the left foot about a three quarter step back into Warrior One. Remember, we've been working on this quite a bit. Remember that in Warrior One, the hips are square to the front of the mat. If you want, you can always bring your hands down to your hips to help square them. And now bend the right knee a little bit more and let the arms float back up into Warrior One. Shoulders square to the front of the mat as well. Now bring the hands behind you and interlace your fingers behind your back and then straighten the elbows to the extent that you can, maybe pressing the skin of the palms together. Check again to see if your shoulders are square. So the tendency is to kind of open up the shoulders to the left side here. What I'd want you to do instead is just check the shoulders, make sure they're square more or less to the front of the mat. Take a deep breath, bend your right knee just a little bit more, and now, humble warrior, bring the right shoulder down towards the right knee. You can move slowly so the core engages deeply. Let your shoulder come to the knee if you can, then let your head drop down. Let the neck muscles completely release now. Keep weight in that back foot, keep the right knee bent. Let your head drop down even more if you're holding it up at all. Now press into the right foot, keep the right knee bent and rise, nice and slow coming up. Keep watching, notice everything as you come up. Once you're up, press the knuckles towards that back heel, draw the shoulder blades together again. Take a deep breath and then exhale. Let's do it again. Humble warrior, right shoulder comes down towards the right knee. Reach the knuckles up and overhead, maybe forward if the mobility of your shoulders allows you to do that. Keep the right knee bent, press into the right foot as you rise back up. That completes our second humble warrior. Let's do one more. We do things in series of three in yoga. Right shoulder down to right knee. Third time on this side. Keep weight in that back foot. Now release the hands and bring them down to the mat on either side of the right foot. Once you're there, straighten the right leg. Pull the right hip back. Pull the left hip forward a little bit. This is pyramid pose. See if you can bring your forehead a little bit closer to the shin or that right knee. Pull the right hip back a little bit more until you feel sensation in the back of the right leg, maybe in the gluteal muscles on the right side as well. Now some deep core work. Pick the fingertips up off the mat, keep the right leg straight, and rise nice and slow, keeping the spine as long as you can and the arms still reaching up and overhead, and then exhale bend the right knee. Bring the arms out to a T and um, bring the weight into the right foot. 
maybe you need to scoot that left foot up a little bit to do this and then float that left foot until you come to warrior three airplane variation of the pose. Do your best to pick the left foot up so it's level with the hip on the left side. Good job everybody. Hands come down to the mat now, standing splits. Lift that left leg up. Bring the weight into the front of the right foot a little bit more and bend the elbows. Let your shoulders drop down, let your head drop down. You'll find the forehead coming closer to the shin on that right leg. Beautiful work. Now bend the right knee, step way back with the left foot into runner's lunge. Leave the left hand on the mat, reach the right hand high. This is a lunge twist. Good job. Bring the right hand down to the inside of the right foot and reach the left hand high. This is a revolved lunge twist. Take a breath. Now spin the left heel to the mat and then rise to warrior two. How does warrior two feel today? Good? You guys are in the sun. That's nice. <laughs> Let's check in with that right knee and make sure that it's pointing straight forward, same direction as the toes on the right foot. Left leg is nice and straight. Now relax the upper body a little bit. And find extended side angle pose. Elbow comes to knee. Reach with the left hand. Stretch it out. Now on the inhale, rise to reverse warrior pose so that right knee stays bent, the right arm reaches up and back. Keep pressing that right knee forward. And for me, I feel a big stretch on the right side body. Maybe you feel that. Keep pressing that right knee forward. Keep the right knee bent and come back to extended side angle pose. Second time on this side. Good job, inhale, rise to reverse warrior pose. Right knee stays bent. So we're really working the quadricep muscles on that right leg. And extended side angle pose, third one in this series, reaching through the left hand. And extended side angle, third one also. Keep pressing that right knee forward. That's the essence of the pose here. Now let's relieve the uh, strain and the quadriceps by straightening the right leg and reaching up and back with the right hand into a reverse triangle pose. Now press into the right foot. Feel the length on the right side body. Now arms come out to a T with the palms facing down. Reach the hands apart from one another. Press into the left foot. So bring lots of pressure into the left foot. Reach the right hand forward. A little more and now drop the right hand down. Triangle pose. Tri Kanasana is the name of this pose in Sanskrit. Head reaching straight forward. Open up the left shoulder a little bit. There you go. Good job. Does that feel different? Yeah. Yeah, good. One more breath in triangle pose. Now bend the right knee and rise to warrior two. Take a breath, that was a long series, and bring the hands down on either side of the right foot. Good job, everybody. Step the right foot back to plank pose. Now three breaths in plank, big, deep breaths. Make the most of them. Deepen the breath even more than you thought you would. And again. And on the exhale, flow through a vinyasa, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. You choose what you prefer, upward facing dog, Upward dog knees off the mat if you can. Press the heart forward. Press the navel forward. Find that deep back bend. Now bring the knees to the mat. Knees come apart. Child's pose. Let your hips drop back to your heels. Arms can reach forward. Keeping a little bit of tension in the back and in the shoulders. You can let your forehead rest on the mat if that feels good. Couple more breaths in child's pose. Uh, 
And one more. On an inhale, come up to kneeling and bring the knees back so they're about hip width apart. We're going to do a back bend now. This is a camel pose. So come up so your shoulders are over your hips and your hips are over your knees. Now bring your hands to the low back. I'll turn around here so you can see. And fingers pointing straight down. And see if you can bring your elbows a little bit closer together. You'll notice that opens up the chest space a little bit. Now press the heels of the hands into the back of your waist until you feel like your hips are coming forward. And then lift your chin. Keep pressing the hands vigorously into the low back. And then think about pressing your chest up towards the sky. Just let the head drop down. Come in to the deepest back bend that you feel comfortable with, and then draw the elbows together just a little bit more. Now keep pressing the hands into the low back as you rise. The hands are giving us support in the pose. Now once you're all the way up and you feel that alignment again, release the hands, reach them high, and then exhale the hands down to the mat. From there, tuck your toes and lift your hips. And let's find downward facing dog, stretching out the whole back body, all the way from the heels through the tailbone, and from the tailbone through the tip of the head and the palm of the hands. One more breath here. Now on an inhale, reach the right leg high and find three-legged dog. Open the hips to the right, and remember to try and press your left heel down towards the mat. It may or may not reach. It's just a direction, it's not necessarily a goal. Now level the hips and bring the right foot down so it meets the left foot. Glide forward to plank pose and then lift your hips high, downward facing dog. Do that one more time, gliding forward to plank and on the exhale, lift the hips again, downward facing dog. On an inhale, left leg rises. Bless you, lift, left the uh, Lift the uh, left leg up and bend the left knee. Open the hips to the left. Try and keep your shoulders square to the front of the mat. And remember, if you want to check in on the shoulders, you can always just lift your chin up. That'll usually help you square the shoulders. Now level the hips and take a three-quarter step forward with the left foot, spinning the right heel to the mat and rising to warrior one. Second side. Check in again with those hips. See if the hips are square to the front of the mat. Good adjustments, everybody. Looks really good. Now bring the hands behind you, interlace the fingers, and straighten the elbows to the extent that you can. Feel the expansiveness you've created at the top of the chest. Breathe into that space. On the exhale, bring the left shoulder down towards the left knee, maybe letting the shoulder rest on the knee if you can. Once you're there, let your head drop down. Let the neck muscles completely relax. Now press into the left foot with the left knee bent and rise, nice and slow, no reason to rush. And exhale, bring it back down. We're going to do it three times. This is the second one on this side. And press into the left foot and bring it back up. Last one. Bring the shoulder down towards the knee. And press into that left foot and come all the way back up. Reach the arms up and overhead. Now, just notice the long straight line from the fingertips through the shoulders to the hips. I'm going to use you as a demonstration. So basically, long straight line. Think about maintaining that line as much as possible as you straighten the left leg and then hinge at the left hip and come all the way down. Bring the hands all the way down to the mat. Good job. Now pull the left hip back a little. Pull the right hip forward, just accentuating that stretch in the back of the left leg. You can let your forehead come down towards the shin or knee. This is pyramid pose, or a version of it anyway. Think about reaching your head, the top of the head, towards the big toe on the left foot. So lengthening the spine. Beautiful. Now bend the left knee and slowly come all the way back up, finding warrior one. 
Left knee bends. Now arms come out to a T. And then slowly bring the weight into that left foot so the right foot just begins to float. And then we can find warrior three on our second side. See if you can pick the right foot up. Move slowly. Just enjoying the balance. Whatever it's giving you today. Just notice the experience. And then bring the hands down to the mat. Standing splits. Right leg reaches up and overhead. The left knee can bend here. And um, you can bend the elbows as well. Let your shoulders come down a little bit more. Let your forehead come closer to the shin of that left leg. Now, left knee bends. Step way back with the right foot into runner's lunge. And the right hand stays on the mat. The left hand reaches high. This is a lunge twist. See if we can stretch that left hand up even a little bit higher. Press the right palm into the mat. Good. Now the left hand comes down to the inside of the left foot, and the right hand reaches high. This is our revolved lunge twist. See if you can open the right side of the uh, heart space up a little bit more. Now spin the right heel to the mat and rise to warrior two. We've come up to warrior two now on our second side. See if we can bend the left knee a little bit more and just kind of settle into the pose. Just relax. Everybody looks so serious. So intent. Extended side angle, elbow to knee, reach with the right hand, press into that right foot. Now open the right side of your heart up a little bit more, maybe even lift your gaze up towards the sky. Keep the left knee bent and rise, or sorry, the yeah, the left knee, reach up and back into a reverse warrior. So that left knee is still bent and pressing forward, maybe even bend it a little bit more. Now, second extended side angle on this side. Elbow comes to knee. Reach with the right hand. And then rise to reverse, tri uh, reverse warrior. Sorry, left knee stays bent. And one more time. Extended side angle pose. And reverse warrior pose. Press that left knee forward one last time for me. And now straighten the left leg, reach up and back into a reverse triangle pose. Press into that left foot. Reach with the left hand so you feel a definite stretch on the left side body. And just take a moment to notice where you're feeling that stretch. Armpit, shoulder, left side body, maybe the left hip, maybe even into the left leg. Now arms come out to a T, palms face down, reach the hands apart from one another. Take a big deep breath. As you exhale, press into the right foot, reach the left hand forward as we come towards triangle pose, and then drop that left hand down, reach the right hand high. And now see if you can open up the right side of the chest a little bit. Lift that right shoulder up just a bit so that the right shoulder is more or less over the left shoulder. One more breath. You guys are doing great. Bend the left knee and rise to warrior two. Take a breath, just settle in. Whew. You seem so far away. <laughs> now cartwheel the hands down on either side of the left foot. Come up onto the ball of the right foot and then step the left foot back to plank pose. Three breaths again in plank. One more breath. Good, now flow through a vinyasa and come to Upward Facing Dog. And then when you're ready, lift your hips into Downward Facing Dog. On the inhale, reach the right leg up. Find three-legged dog, second time. Opening the hips to the right. Remember to try and press the left heel down. Now, 
level the hips off and then step your right foot forward so the right foot comes between the hands. Untuck the toes and bring the left knee to the mat. Move your right hand to the inside of the right foot. And we're going to come down to lizard pose. So if you're able to, come down to the elbows. If that doesn't work, stay up on the hands, but bend the elbows as much as possible. What we're trying to do is let the chest come down as far as possible. The hips are going to stay up a little bit. Now maybe scoot that left knee back just an eighth of an inch, just a little bit just to accentuate that stretch. It's a huge hip opening pose. Breathe deeply into it. One more breath. Now tuck the toes and bring the left knee off the mat and then step the right foot back into a dolphin plank pose. So the elbows are on the mat in dolphin plank. Hips are aligned with the shoulders and the heels. That is long straight line from the shoulders through the hips to the heels. Press the forearms into the mat, press the elbows into the mat, press the hands into the mat. Now walk the feet forward to dolphin pose. The hips rise, it's just like a downward facing dog except the elbows are on the mat instead of the palms. Two more breaths in dolphin pose. You let your head drop down. You don't need to hold it up. Now bring the knees to the mat. Walk back up onto the hands. Hands under the shoulders. Tuck your toes and lift your hips. Downward dog. Awesome work. On an inhale, left leg rises. Three-legged dog. Second one on this side. Opening the hips to the left this time. See if you can bend that left knee just a little bit more. Let the left foot drop down. And then level the hips off. Step the left foot forward so it comes between the hands. And then bring the right knee to the mat. Untuck the toes. Bring the left hand to the inside of the foot. And come down to the elbows. So lizard pose, second side. Now you can explore with that left knee a little bit in the pose. So you can hug the left knee in towards your left shoulder. That'll give you one feel. You can let the left knee move off to the left coming up onto the pinky toe side of that left foot. That'll give you a different feel, probably. Just take a moment to explore. See what it feels like. Let's come out of the pose now, walk back up onto the hands, tuck the toes and bring the right knee off the mat, straightening the right leg. Now step the left foot back into plank pose and we're going to pause for three breaths in plank. A big deep breath in and exhale, let it go. And again, a big deep breath and let it go. And one more big deep breath and on the exhale, flow through our final vinyasa of today's practice into upward facing dog and then when you're ready downward facing dog stretch it out now bend the knees and take a nice hop so the feet end up eventually between the hands bend the knees and rise to chair pose reaching the arms up and overhead if you want or you can bring hands to heart center if you prefer. One more breath. Now everyone hands to heart center if they're not already there. We're going to take a twist. Left elbow to right knee. The right elbow reaches towards the cloudless sky, which seems to be our theme today. Bring it back to center and over to the other side, right elbow to left knee. Chair twist, second side. And back to center. Now reach the arms forward with the palms facing down. And then slowly descend, eventually coming all the way down to a seat. Once you're seated, flip the palms so they face one another. Lean back and pick the feet up off the mat into an unsupported half boat pose. Take a breath there. 
Now bring the hands to the back of the knees and then pull the shoulder blades back a little bit. Let your chest rise. Take a deep breath and on the exhale straighten the legs into a supported boat pose and breathe. Lean back just a little bit, almost imperceptibly, and then release the tension of the hands to the back of the knees, and maybe release the hands forward into a full boat pose. If at any time you want to gently bring the hands back to the knees, feel free to do that. One more breath. Now let the heels float down, reach the arms high, Lengthen the upper body. Press the sitting bones down. So really feel grounded in the sitting bones. And then fold forward over both legs. Knees can bend a little bit here if you want to. Now, with your chin on your chest, draw your navel towards your spine as you rise. So the spine rounds as you come up. And then once you're all the way up, let your arms float back high. And then exhale the hands behind you and find a cross-legged posture. Press the palms into the mat with the fingers towards the back of the mat. And then walk your hands back towards one another until, can you get, get it to you so that your pinky toe, uh, pinky toes, pinky fingers touch? Almost. Well, come as close as you can. And then on an inhale, lift your chin up, look up towards the cloudless sky. Press the palms into the mat and press your chest up towards the sky. Draw the shoulder blades together. Find a nice back bend. One more breath here. Now lean forward so the weight comes off the hands. The arms want to float up. Let that happen. And then exhale the hands down to the knees. Bring the soles of the feet to the mat. And let's roll all the way down to our back. Once you're on your back, it's time for happy baby pose. Hands to the pinky toe side of the feet and soles of the feet reaching to the sky. We're going to have seven breaths in happy baby pose. Start to let your breath slow a little bit. And if a full happy baby pose doesn't work for you, remember half happy baby pose is always an option. For a half happy baby pose, you just have one hand on one foot. The other foot is on the mat with the knee bent. Four more breaths. And three more. Two more breaths. And one more. Release the hands now. Reach the heels up to the sky. Legs up the wall pose. Now press your tailbone down towards the mat. And then point your toes pretty vigorously up to the sky. Press the tailbone down again if you lifted it up. And at the same time reach the toes away from the tailbone. Now pull the toes down towards your face. Press the heels up towards the sky. The legs stay straight and feel that stretch move into the back of the legs, particularly the calves. Let your feet return to a normal position and then bend the knees. Bring the soles of the feet to the mat. Walk your feet back till you're in position for bridge pose. If you prefer to do wheel pose, feel free to do that instead. On an inhale, press the feet into the mat and then exhale and lift the hips up into bridge pose. We're gonna find three more breaths in bridge pose. Let your breath start to deepen. Maybe lift the hips a little bit higher and one more breath. And on the exhale, release the tailbone to the mat and bring your knees into your chest. Hug them in with the arms. And if it feels good, bring your forehead towards your knees, rounding the spine. Release the head back to the mat. 
bring the arms out to a T now with the palms facing down ground, either into the floor if you're at home or into the earth if you're here in the park. With the knees more or less right over the hips, let your knees float to the left and hover just an inch above the mat or the floor or the grass. Now inhale the knees back to center and over to the right side. Let them hover there just for a moment. And then back to center and over to the left. And just continue to flow from side to side with your breath and at the pace that feels good to you. At no point do the knees come all the way down. They're always hovering one place or another, one side or another. Now begin to notice how this movement feels in your body. Do you feel it in the abdominal muscles and in the, uh, the uh, transverse abdominal muscles on the side? Do you feel the gentle massaging action at the top of the gluteal muscles? What else do you feel in the movement? The next time your knees float to the right, let them land. Now shift your gaze to the left. And if it feels all right, just let your eyes close down. Let your breath return to its normal rhythm. Let the breath slow a little bit. Now let your knees float back to center, very little effort, and over to the left side. Your gaze will shift to the right now. And again, the eyes can remain closed down. Now take a moment to notice the spinal twist. In anatomy, they call it a spinal rotation. What that means is that the shoulders are in a different plane than the hips. So we've twisted the spine about 90 degrees, more or less. Let the knees float back to center now. Reach the heels up to the sky. Bring your hands down by your side again, legs up the wall. Point to the toes, not too much, just a little bit. See if you can keep your legs straight and let your heels float all the way down to the mat, noticing the abdominal engagement as you do that. You can go as slowly or as quickly as you like. And once your heels land, flip your palms so they face up. Let your toes flop out, coming into Shavasana. It's always an option in Shavasana to let your eyes remain open if you want. And it's particularly nice when we're out in the park and you can see the leaves on the trees and the cloudless sky. So feel free to do that, to let your eyes remain open for a while. Or let them close. It's up to you. Now become aware of all the sensory experiences you are having. The sounds. both the near ones and the distant ones, the distinct ones and the muffled ones, the smells of this beautiful late spring day, the feeling of the air moving,
and the sights if your eyes are open. And maybe even the taste in your mouth. Notice any feelings that arise for you. Whatever they are, without judging them. Just notice them. And any thoughts. Just become very present to each component of the experience of being here. When you're ready, allow gentle movement to return to the fingers and toes. And then bend your knees, draw them in towards your chest, and roll over to your side. Then bring yourself to a seat. And once you're seated, you can bring your hands to heart center and press the palms together lightly. Now take a deep breath in and feel the breath helping to lengthen the spine, feeling the head rising up. And then let the breath flow out. And do that one more time. Take a deep breath in. And let it go. Now join me, if you like, in offering loving kindness. May you be happy and well, and may you be safe, and may you be peaceful and at ease. Thank you so much for being here today. Namaste.